Hey everyone, welcome back to another quick tie. My name is Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Board for Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. We want to thank Western Canada Fly Fishing Guide School for bringing you this quick tie today. Um, we're excited to show you this pattern. This is one of my new favorites. This is the Never Sink Caddis. You can see it there below me. Um, this is coming out of season six, episode 13. So this is coming out of our last week of flies uh, for this season. But this is a great little pattern. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. Hit that bell icon. It's going to let you know um, every time we have another video come out, even if it's not necessarily tying related, any of our videos throughout the year will come up and it'll show you that. I'm going to be tying out of my season six kit. Looks like this. Um, if you're doing the same, go ahead and look for that episode 13. It should be the last package in your box and uh, pull out the caddis uh, package. If you're tying out of the in individual kit, um, then just go ahead and grab the one labeled Never Seen Caddis. Uh, if you don't have any of our kits, that's also totally fine. Just head over to our website. Uh, the full fly recipe is there and you can go ahead and tie along with your own materials. Okay guys, it's enough for the business. Let's get down to the fly. So what it's gonna look like, um, some huge features of this fly. As caddis go, sometimes uh, they sink and that's beautiful, built right into this name, Never Sink Caddis. That is what I found. I found that it was extremely um, floatable, which was super helpful when it comes to fishing heavier water. So this guy is one of my new favorites. It's actually a fairly simple pattern. We'll take you through it. I, I know you're gonna nail it. It's not too tough, too tough at all. So let's go ahead and get that out of the vise. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my next hook. So we are tying this in a size 14, so it is a little smaller, but I would say the two sizes for myself that I have used are the 14 uh, and the 12. Both have been great. I'm tying with some UTC 70 in this brown color. Uh, it kind of fits the, fits the fly quite nicely. Gonna go ahead and start my thread just behind the eye. I'm gonna work it back down the hook shank before either cutting it out or breaking it off. You can take that right back to that hook bend. This is where we're gonna start putting in some material. So right away, we're gonna go to our dubbing. We're gonna use it a couple times in this fly. You've got a ton of it in here. This is a really um, light colored tan, and it's it's also a very light dubbing. It's It has consistencies of a rabbit fur dubbing um, with a little bit of synthetic in there, but it makes for a nice combo in this fly. So we're gonna make a little dubbing noodle here. It's not gonna be super long, and it's not gonna be super thick. So. We do want to create a little bit of a taper if we can um, on this on this noodle, so it's going to be a little thinner up at the top. But it's probably about two and a half inches long, and that should be enough to get us through this pattern. So I'm going to start making some wraps right back at the bend of the hook, and then just start working those wraps forward and hopefully building the taper to look bigger as we get up towards the front here. I'm going to back off just a bit because I want to add a little bit more right there. And we need to leave about a third of the fly for the front portion, which is gonna be all the hackle and some foam, okay? So I'm happy with how that turned out. You got a little bit of a taper in there. Um, the next thing we're gonna uh, get over to is going to be our foam. So you got some of this two mil tan foam in your kit. Looks like this. Okay, now this is gonna be too wide for what we need for this pattern. So I'm gonna show you how I'm trimming it down. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab myself about an inch and a half piece. And then I'm gonna trim it lengthwise to about half of the width that you have there. So we want it to be roughly a hook gap in width. So if you need to measure it off of your fly, I'll show you once I trim this off here and we'll check the size if it's pretty close or I need to take a little more. So if I come in here and I check it, the width, that's pretty darn close to that hook width, or sorry, hook gap width. Man, that's a, that's a tough thing to say. So I'm just gonna make sure this is nice and even throughout the entirety of this strip of foam. Looks pretty good. Then right back at the top here, I'm gonna just gonna put a little bit of a cut in and nick off the corners so it's not a straight flat cut. That's gonna be for the back portion of the fly. So I'm gonna come in and place this foam right up on top of my dubbing. I want it to extend just out beyond the back of the hook bend about a hook gap in width in a uh, distance out the back. I'm gonna change my hands over. I'm gonna give a good pinch here. Now I'm gonna take some wrap over that foam. It's probably gonna wanna spin your foam a bit, so I haven't pulled tight yet. I wanna wait till I get a few wraps on there and then I'm gonna pinch right where the knot, or right where those wraps were, and that'll help cinch that down without spinning the foam. So this is, should be what we're left with, just like that. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna lift up that foam. 
I'm gonna take some nice thread wraps down all the way to the eye. And then I'm gonna bring that foam back down and I'm gonna take a thread wrap right over top of the foam at the eye. Again, pinching. So I should be left with something that looks like that. And then all I'm gonna do is start compressing that foam down that I just kinda gapped over. This is where we're kinda creating a platform for our hackle to sit in and our deer hair, okay? So once I've got to this position, I've got that compressed, I am gonna come just trim a little bit of length off this front piece just so it's not too long and difficult to kind of work around. And then I'm gonna go to my deer hair. So like most classic caddis patterns, you're gonna have some blonde deer hair or elk hair. You're gonna wanna grab yourself a decent little clump, about a half of a pencil width. We don't need a ton on this pattern. Go ahead and trim it off the patch pull out any of that under fur that might still be in there. And then we're gonna chuck this in a hair stacker. So get those tips right inside of there. Give that a good tap on the table. And then we wanna take it off with the base pointed back down the fly with those tips aligned coming out the back. And I can go in there and just pinch those out. Once I've got this in my hands, I wanna make sure that I always, if I gotta switch hands or anything, I wanna make sure that I'm not losing those tips and that they're coming uneven as I will have to then stack them again. So I want these tips to extend basically to the back of that foam. So from this position, I'm gonna go ahead and change hands over. I'm gonna pinch on that deer hair right there. I'm gonna take a wrap up over top. This one's not gonna be super tight. But the next one I'm gonna pull a little tighter and the third one, the tightest, should flare um, the butt ends of that deer hair and before I ever let go with the fingers here because I don't want to involve the tips in this at all I'm just gonna come in here and do my best to trim out those butt ends of the deer hair Make sure I get the majority of them out And trim down fairly close and then again before I let go. I'm just gonna take some thread wraps over top of those butt ends and then I can let go Okay, perfect. So you can see that the tips, if I lay them back, extend just beyond the foam, which is perfect, just like what we wanted. Should look like this on the underside. And now we're gonna get our hackle prepared and tied in, and then we are basically done this fly. So you got two hackles in there. You've got a dark brown, and you've got a grizzly white and black. Okay, so we're gonna tie in the dark brown one first. So I'm gonna come to the bottom stem and I'm gonna peel off a few of those fibers so I expose a little bit of that stem for tie-in. I'm gonna tie it in just in front of that deer hair. Just a couple of wraps and I can let my bobbin hang, go over to my next tackle where it's gonna tie them in right on top of each other. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. I'm gonna expose just a little bit of stem, to tie it in, just kind of pinching my fingers and pulling off some of those barbs. Gonna lay that right there, take a couple thread wraps. And now from this point, I wanna make sure I kinda secure those stems right down on the hook shank itself. And creating that nice wrap all the way down to the eye. But before we wrap our hackle forward, we're actually gonna put just a very light dusting of dubbing back on. So I'm just gonna do basically enough to color my thread. It's also gonna help that hackle um, from slipping down the ramp itself, the ramp as we call it. Just gonna put a little bit on here, just enough, be about an inch long, and it'll cover up our thread wraps and kind of just give a little bit of something for that hackle to bite into. So just a very light dusting, just like that. Now, instead of doing these individually, I'm gonna hold these together, stack them one on top of the other, and I'm just gonna wrap them in unison First, I need to do one full wrap all the way around just in front of the deer hair, and then just holding them together, palmer them forward, all the way down to the eye. Creates a very nice, neat looking hackle, and it also gives you that two-tone color in the hackle, just kind of simulating you know, a different color in the legs. Just make sure I get some thread wraps both behind and in front of the hackle, try not to lock down too much of that hackle as I do that. And now from this point, what I wanna do is you can either whip finish or for myself here, I'm just gonna use my half hitch tool. I'm gonna come in here and half hitch um, this fly right as it stands before I trim out that hackle. 
coming up over the eye. So again, all I'm doing is placing my tool on my thread, wrapping around once, twice, tipping that the hole on that tool over the hook eye. This is a very nice way to finish a fly off when you're doing dry flies. And now that I've got that secured, I can come in here and trim out my thread. And then I can come in here and trim out these hackles, getting as close as possible without cutting too much out. Just like that. And then all I need to do to finish this off is I'm just gonna take a little bit more off that front foam. I want it to extend just out in front of the hook eye, but not as far as that was. And then I'm just gonna round the corners off with my scissors. And that, my friends, is the Never Sink Caddis. Take a look at that thing, super buggy, um, love it. You can change that color of dubbing, whether you're doing it in tan or that uh, kind of classic green color as well. Uh, both are gonna work just fine on this pattern. Play with some colors and play with some sizes. I know you're gonna love it. It is definitely one of my new favorites. Okay, guys, again, I'm Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Bover Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. And I wanna thank you for joining us for another quick tie that's been brought to us by Western Canada Fly Fishing Guide School. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. Hit that bell icon. Um, it'll let you know when we have some more videos coming your way. Okay, you guys have a great week. See you later.